Quaedza. Quaedza. Quaedza is a simple word in the Shona language, but it's a word that is pregnant with meaning. It means dawn. More accurately, it suggests the phrase, it has dawned. For us and our partners on both sides of the ocean, it is reflective of the amazing stories of redemption that we constantly experience in Zimbabwe. Lost and homeless children have awakened, as it were, to the dawning of the first day of a wonderful life. It is a dawning of identity, of belonging, of being loved. It's the dawning of opportunity for safe shelter, for healthy food, and for sound education. Quaedza means hope. It also speaks of a new day of opportunity in Zimbabwe. The church has come of age in that southern African nation. Many pastors and leaders and members of local congregations have answered the call to compassionate ministry to the poor and destitute. Today's fresh dawn of opportunity is allowing people within the household of faith outside of Zimbabwe to come together under the leadership of Zimbabwean practitioners. As cross-cultural intermediaries, we are poised to be able to bring together people with a shared vision, but from opposite sides of the world. We see the birth of relationships. The birth of relationships that, when carefully nurtured and protected, produce trust and result in relevant and sustainable responses to people in crisis. The hallmarks of this new dawn of opportunity are rooted and grounded in what Zimbabweans are doing for Zimbabweans. Committed cross-cultural relationships are becoming well-directed strategic partnerships. Hope breeds hope in Africa. Some of our friends knew tragedy and abuse themselves, but they became rescuers of the abused. Pastor Peter is case in point. I wish you could meet my friend Peter. His life is an amazing story of rescue and redemption. When he was a little boy, he was orphaned. He came under the control of an older sister who abused him. She would send him to work for money that he would earn for her. He was so desperate that he tried, before the age of 12, to take his own life repeatedly. Early in the morning of the night of his third attempt, there was a knock on the little wooden door of his hut and he opened the door to find a local pastor standing there who said that in a dream in the night, he had been told to go there to look for a boy named Peter and to rescue him. Peter went and became a, a member of the family in that pastor's home and he was not only housed but he was fed and he was clothed and he was educated and he was loved. And he grew up to be a remarkable young man who when he was still a high school boy heard that there were three babies who had been abandoned in a nearby uh, town. He rushed to the scene and he rescued these three babies and he took them as his own children. When he had to go to class, he would arrange for other ladies to look, look after them for him. They have since grown to adulthood and he has adopted many, many more. He married a wonderful woman by the name of Tsitsi and together they have continued to have a wonderful ministry to marginalize and disenfranchised abandoned babies. Peter represents an interesting phenomenon that we have encountered in Zimbabwe, and that is that in many cases, when, when God is part of the equation, th those who have been rescued from abusive situations in turn become rescuers of the abuse.
Peter is representative of a number of dedicated and deeply committed pastors who are leading their congregations in a ministry to orphaned children. Picture a pastor like Peter, with four biological children of his own, whose family has expanded to become 12. These 12 all live with Peter and Tsitsi in their own home, but the family is extended to 14 more who live just down the road in a place called Runyararo Children's Home. Pastors like Peter have responded tangibly, giving what they have to do what they can. They lead people to join them and contribute tangibly as they are able. These pastors and these people need enabling too. Quaeza's trusted partner, Jeff Chifamba, and his team are doing just that. Jeff had made his way with his family to the United Kingdom when he was asked to return to Zimbabwe to lead an organization called Hands of Hope. Jeff and his team are giving carefully selected and proven pastors a hand up, not a hand out. This is where the global church comes in. The global church is enabling Jeff and his team to enable pastors, to enable people, to enable marginalized and disenfranchised Zimbabweans. Pastors are being enabled to reach further and do more. The church in Zimbabwe is proving to be the most effective agent of meaningful change in the nation. In the first two years of operation, we saw four North American churches begin to engage in direct hands-on participation. Vision teams came and saw where and how God is at work in Zimbabwe. The church leadership these teams represented then entered into a discernment phase, then responded in specific ways. Today, there are four strategic partnerships underway, but we've only just begun. The opportunities are overwhelming. As this new day dawns, it will bring new light and new life in ways that are profoundly effective and sustainable. Feeding programs are subsidizing the diet of many children. Educational needs are being met from a simple literacy and reading program to more organized and comprehensive learning. We're working to improve agricultural methods in order to increase yield and subsidize the cost of caring for orphan children. Rotational programs like chicken projects and fish farming are providing protein and income. All of it is for the purpose of fulfilling the heart of God for the helpless and hopeless. Stories of spiritual, social, physical, and material redemption abound. Hands of Hope is only one of the partners who have embraced us in Zimbabwe. Rob and Lisa lead a dynamic youth-oriented response initiative called Dare to Serve. Dave and Helen work with Refat to lead the Michael Project, a three-pronged outreach named after an adopted Mozambican toddler who died of an AIDS-related illness. Nyasha is another. Nyasha was orphaned as a child through tragic circumstances, but rose above those circumstances and a subsequent abusive and arranged marriage to lead an initiative called Bridging the Gap. Today, Nyasha is a courageous young woman who works diligently on behalf of adolescent and young women at risk. She is also empowering communities through education and income-generating activities. Out of the ashes of her own experience has emerged the beauty of an effective ministry to adults who have either perpetrated or are victims of conflict, violence, and or abuse, bringing together people who have been in conflict, providing them with opportunities for learning, for truth-telling, and experiencing healing, forgiveness, and reconciliation. As we forge ahead as cross-cultural facilitators of an expanding response, we will work hard to extend the good work that is being done. We'll also work hard to move into areas of great need that are as yet unattended. Two of these are trauma counseling and skills training. Every child we work with has been deeply traumatized. Every child is growing and developing. The majority are still young, but they will soon need to find their way in the big wide world and need to be adequately equipped to be effective contributors to communities in society. We invite you to join us. 
you will find hands-on opportunity to engage. You'll begin with meaningful relationships with Zimbabweans. You and the Zimbabweans you work with will be able to engage cross-culturally. You will discover practical ways of engagement. You will be a meaningful part of this meaningful response. Meaningful relationships and the ministry traction that results are guaranteed because we're plugging people in to work with people plugged in to what God is doing globally. I say globally because in this day and age, the blessing really flows both ways. A few days before we left Zimbabwe toward the end of the year, I received a phone call from one of the pastors we're working with. A baby boy and a little girl had been found abandoned and taken to the Ministry of Social Welfare. The pastor was asked if he could take them in. The pastor called me to tell me that he had and asked if we could call in to see them before we left the country. That pastor was Peter. The little boy's, the little boy's new name? Little Peter. Little Peter and Miriam have joined the ranks of the others. They will grow up with food in their tummies. They will be educated. They will become effective contributors in tomorrow's world. They will, in turn, reach out to those in need. There's no reason why little Peter can't become big Peter one day. <laughs> 